Let's move on to another sport we've played for in national team colors, the d tennis. At the highest level, it's either the Davis Cup or the Olympics. It was the Davis Cup. Right now, it's the Davis Cup. I mean, in national team colors, it's the Correct. Davis Cup. It's the World Cup of Tennis. Correct. Kenya, what was it that got the people at Kenya Lone Tennis to get you into an interim board earlier this year? Well, again, uh, we, uh, similar problems uh, uh, like uh, the the cricket. The development, I mean, in, in, in the days that when I played junior, there was some quality junior players in the 70s and 80s, and there was junior tournaments in the country. There was tournaments in Thika, there was a tournament in Eldoret, there was a tournament in Nyanyuki, there was a tournament in Kisumu, you know, Mombasa. So it was all around and, and, peop and the youngsters used to travel. And that youngsters was some real quality tennis players we had. And at the end, the peak we had was uh, Paul Vakesa, who did wonders for Kenyan. I think he's, he would r easily be rated as the top uh, player in the last 50 years as far as Kenya tennis is Actually, concerned. Actually, he's, um, uh, he's in the Soya Hall of Fame. So he's already made it. I think he's the youngest person to be in that Hall of Fame. And uh, yes, he's only Kenyan to have broken into top 100. Absolutely. I mean, he's played all the Grand Slams. He's done extremely well. Uh, very humble by nature. Uh, know him personally well. Of course, I did play against him uh, many times. We were in the team in Egypt together. Uh, so he has been the phenomena in, uh, in, in Kenya tennis is concerned. He, he retired, I think, in the mid-90s. Late uh, 90s. Yeah. 1996, he kind of uh, finished. But nothing came through after that. So again, it's a similar scenario where you need to market the sport. The administration again became a problem. And that's why the interim committee was formed because everything was haywire. The accounts are not in place. And, and that's a common story in most of our sports associations. The, and what is uh, disturbing me, which I realized in that interim committee, is this what we now create called sitting allowance. That's not the culture that we are brought up in. When you do a volunteer job in an organization, you do it out of your own choice. You do it for the love of the sport. You're not there to gain money. In fact, people put in their hands in their pocket to give money to the sport. So there was a lot of those things happening which I realized. And then money taken, I mean, of course, I cannot dwell too much on it at this, at this forum. But I have all documentary evidence on the things that were happening. And I realized that this is really... Was it with the interim board or with the previous board? With the previous board. And the interim committee was also heading towards that, but we put a stop to it. Uh, I mean, I voiced my opinion very clearly that this cannot be acceptable. The, the one thing we've got to ask is tennis. Still, I mean, let's look at it. It's a sport which at the highest level, you hear of scandals. It's only this young Australian guy, Nick Kyrgios, who's causing hey, mayhem all over the place. But when you come down to a country like Kenya and you hear the stories, what is going on? How can you get people involved? I think the only tournaments we could talk about was uh, the gym, uh, the Davis tournament or something happening at Sadili or the Kenya Open. That's it. Yeah, again, uh, again, we have a, a general uh, problem with the youths nowadays. I mean, most of the youths are not uh, putting time in sports. I think that's a huge problem and I think social media, sorry to say, but has been part of this problem. The PlayStation games is, is another issue that is a phenomenon in every home, uh, including my own. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so it's a scenario everywhere and I'm sure all the parents uh, listening to this will agree with what I'm saying. So all those factors have come in where sports is hard work. It's not something, and especially if you want to play at a higher level. It requires a lot of discipline, it requires a lot of dedication, it requires a lot of desire, a lot of hunger to do well. And all that requires a lot of hard work. So unless we can instill a priority among our youths to go back to sports, because sports now is a different dimension. It has a lot of job creation. Due to sports, you can get sports scholarships, you can study because of sports. There are jobs related to it. There is a professional uh, sports where the money is astronomical. I mean, look at football, the money involved. Look at the golf, the money is involved. Cricket now with the IPL has brought in huge money. So it's something that, and that's why I say, it's important that it starts from the top of the government. We, 
and I appeal again to the Jubilee government, and I've said it in every forum that I get an opportunity, that we need a ministry of sports on its own, not something small, you know, ministry, what we have right now is a ministry of youth and culture, and then a little small word of mm -hmm. sport comes in. And more importantly, we need a cabinet secretary who knows the value of sports and how important it is. And the government must put emphasis because I also believe that sports unifies a country. It unifies a group of people that have a disagreement. You, when our uh, Kenyan uh, marathoners win, do we say which community they come from? We say a Kenyan has won. I mean, I mean, there was, there was, a, there was a country I mean, in the last week of August, and I know there will be tomorrow evening. But something people ask about sports administration before I get back to matters to do with tennis. They, I mean, there are two models which, we, I mean, which can be picked. Do we go the American way, which is full-blown commercial, or do we go the Russian way, where there is so much government involvement? No, I go by the full commercial. But the government must endorse it. The, the, it must come from the president. The endorsement has to come from the president where it is filtering down to now that the, we have 47 counties and it has to go to the governors and more importantly there must be a good budget to create the infrastructure which is very important. For example, cricket does not even have its own cricket stadium. The still, it's, it's still private members yeah, clubs. The, the administration over the years has always relied on a club to provide, which, which of course must be fully acknowledged with the support that the clubs have given. But we need our own structures. Tennis doesn't have the same thing. Most of the sport don't have their own structure. So we need to have it from the top, where the president endorses it, have a very, very competent cabinet secretary who understands the value, who has played sports at a high level, who has the administration skill. And of course, fortunately or unfortunately in Kenya, he must be also politically uh, good, good, you know, or knowledgeable <laughs> to handle himself, and then this must filter to the counties. Uh, and let's get back to tennis. Investing in the sports, you need the rackets. You probably need shoes. Um, what we call clay courts are basically maram. Um, there is no proper hard court in Kenya. Grass courts we can have. What about investing in the sport? Because some people may consider it expensive. Yes, it's it definitely tennis is an expensive sport. But the ITF, the International Tennis Federation, do f give some funding. For, for development. Again, it comes to how you're going to develop and how you're going to give uh, the nurture the youngsters. What type of platform are you giving them? What type of environment are you giving them? We need, and, and that responsibility lies from the parents, from the administrations and the clubs. It's a, it's a collective. It's not one person's uh, responsibility. It's a collective responsibility where all the stakeholders need to take part. I mean, I remember during our days, my parents would be fully supporting despite the financial challenges. They would ensure that they would provide us all the kit that is necessary. They would support, because I used to travel from Mombasa to Nairobi. Most of the control was in Nairobi. So traveling those days was not by air. It was by taxi or by coast bus. You know, in those, those, that's the tough things we used to go through. But the support was there from the parents. And the initiative and the desire was within us of wanting to do it. So I think it's a combination of all the stakeholders wanting to to go to that level and just one question which nobody asked how long does it take to develop a proper tennis player well it definitely does take time i mean you know you've got uh, at international level you know you've got the nadals and the, and the djokovic who started at the age of five six you know and for for good 10 12 years they play the junior circuit and it's th all they do is just play tennis they've got the right coaches they've got the right backup and you know they eat they sleep they drink cricket all, that's all the things. So, I mean, and tennis. tennis. Sorry, this, <laughs> and for that matter, even cricket is a similar thing. You know, you've got to have the desire, you as a person. And of course, get a backup, uh, what I said earlier, so that you can take your talent to the next level. All right, fine. We've got about uh, two or three minutes to go. First of all, the Karim Zia's son, um, he declined to captain the Kenya side. I'll not talk about that. So much involved about it. But he is a third generation man, uh, Karim in Kenyan colors. Could tell us about that. Yeah, uh, we've been a blessed uh, family as far as sports is uh, concerned. My father um, was a tennis champion for 25 years, you know, in the colonial days from 1951 at the age of 17, when he was 16, 17, up to the age of 42, uh, when he was unbeaten, you know, beating the colonial Muzungus and then carrying on the tradition for 25 years. So we inherited tennis and of course he was also a first class uh, cricket player and of course that had his own communal politics but this is not the forum to talk about <laughs> it but he also played at the highest level and then 
my elder brother Ari followed it myself we followed it and now we are, we are blessed to have a, a son who is also carrying on the tradition he is playing at the international level last week he was in in india uh, representing england in a university competition where he is studying at loughborough university each country had a local cricket tournament so the winner of the tournament represented in the world cup so loughborough university in england won the local tournament so he had the opportunity to represent england in this world cup and and they reached the finals losing to south africa uh, the university from south africa they were all the top uh, universities from all the countries australia represented there south africa india pakistan sri lanka uae so it was a fantastic tournament in dehradun india fantastic stadium i mean talk about the stadium is abu manu cricket academy what that's what it's called uh, and i would suggest people who who love cricket especially for the youngsters to google that uh, that place and and the facilities they had you know those are the type of facilities we need here if we have to nurture the youngsters all right something else i don't know if it's crazy or what you publish a magazine um we've got the, we get the copies here but it's not about selling it yes um this uh, venture started 15 years back uh, and 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 i wanted to give back to sports because i realized uh, i know myself i know my nature and i know how i like to do things the administration that was going on in the uh, sports structure where i'm involved or played at the highest level cricket and tennis was a tall order there was a lot of cancer already ingrained in it so uh, it was a choice of going in and joining the gang and fighting it through i didn't have the energy or the inclination to go into that but i wanted to contribute back to sport so i decided and and i realized that after we traveled all over the world the amount of publicity and i give full marks to you guys the media for the role that you play in publicizing whatever you do uh, objectively constructively and th- i said no we need to support our sportsmen we need to encourage and of course be critical where necessary so i decided to uh, publish a sports magazine and fortunately for the last 15 years we maintained it and we will be publishing the 100th issue uh, later in november and uh, we are hoping that this magazine can even become bigger to make it last so that it becomes a, a perpetual magazine and i'm hoping that we can get some ngos or some companies who would like to partner with us to take this magazine to uh, a new level and hopefully maybe the ministry can come in All right. Thank you very much Asif Karim. This match is played f- uh, tennis and cricket for Kenya at the highest level. He's talking about the state of affairs of the sport. It's either I mean f- um one thing I'd like to ask him before he leaves, which way for the sport is it going down or is it is there a way out? There is always a way out, but there's got to be sincerity from the stakeholders. I think we first need to be honest that we are in trouble. You know, you can only uh, doctor can only heal you if you first tell him that you are sick. But if you pretend that you are not sick, then it's very difficult for for a doctor to heal you. So I think, as lovers of the sport, the game has been there before us. The game has has given us wonders for most of us who have had the opportunity to play at the highest level. The game will remain after us. So I think it's it's a responsibility of this generation to leave a place better than what we found. And I think it's high time now that the stakeholders. all the past administrators the current administrators the past players who have done wonders for this country and all lovers of cricket uh, and tennis for their sport to come have a two or three day uh, an open discussion an open forum and let's see how we can salvage the situation